Dr. Salzman, I'd like to ask you this morning, who gets arthritis of the ankle? Is, is this a growing problem, and, and, and what are the kinds of things that we can do for it? The major cause of ankle arthritis is post-traumatic, related to, usually related to high-energy injuries, and because of life-saving airbags, we're seeing more and more severe end-stage ankle arthritis in younger and younger patients. So it's a different disease than knee or hip arthritis that generally affects more of the elderly. What are the types of things, uh, say, a young patient, uh, uh, let's start with the younger patient and then we can go to an older patient, but a younger patient who comes in with ankle arthritis um, uh, and medicines don't help, what are, what are the kind of surgical things uh, that you think can be done? Yeah, the surgical approach is, the standard surgical approach is a fusion of the ankle, but for young patients that's not a great option because it will ultimately lead to uh, arthritis of the other joints of the foot and ankle region. So the alternative approaches would be either to replace the ankle with cartilage and bone from a, from a cadaver, to realign the ankle if, if it's badly aligned, or to realign the ankle and to distract it or pull the two joint surfaces apart and let a new cartilage surface reform. All three of those are somewhat experimental, but they all have promising early results, and I think for the younger person, it's, it's likely to be worthwhile giving it a good try before going to a fusion or other alternative treatments. And uh, when those treatments are not able to be helpful, uh, is, is, is fusion this, this, this still the standard of treatment for ankle arthritis, and, and uh, do people get initial improvement from it? Fusion is a very good option. 90% uh, of patients who have fusions, fusion surgeries end up with a satisfactory fusion. And of those, most of those patients, about 90%, have great pain relief. The problem with fusion, there are two problems with fusion. One is function. It's difficult to walk up and down stairs, up and down uneven terrain, up and down hills. It's difficult to pick up um, objects on the floor. Some people have difficulty with sleeping position or using the pressing on the gas pedal. Uh, so that's one of the concerns function. And the other one is eventually wearing out the other joints of the ankle, around the ankle, such as the joints below or in front of it as part, that are part of the foot. So in general, patients, 80% 80, 80 of them or 89% of them are quite satisfied with it, but there's, there's these limitations that we would like to improve on. That's correct. Um, and um, what about in the stage where we say, okay, can we replace the ankle uh, and, and, and do joint replacements of the ankle? That's a great question. Currently, there are several different ankle replacements that are used in the United States. One is a widely available, and one is being, uh, being looked at as part of an FDA trial. Both have promising uh, early results and midterm results. However, I, I actually think that in the next two or three years, even better designs are going to become available to the surgeon and the patient uh, to replace the ankle in a way that will be long-lasting and function near normally. So you think that in the end, with better designs, we could uh, approach uh, the kind of treatment that's done for knees and hips in terms of efficacy and longevity? Yes, I do. I think we're close to that now, and I think the team that's here in hospital surgery will be at the leading edge of, of that work.